Hey boys and girls, uh, welcome back to Monroe Live. And today we're gonna do the hoist review um, on, the, um, on the Rubicon E version here. So um, who I've got with me is uh, Dave Oberholzer. Here he's known as OB1. And uh, Dave is gonna take us through and, um, and we're gonna talk a little bit about this vehicle. Now, I've said this a couple of times, I've been driving Jeeps since I was about 16, Jeep Wranglers. Um, I currently have uh, 2013, which is much older than this one. Um, and I am going to be bringing Dave in here to help us out because he actually was on the uh, Chrysler team that worked on this. Um, he was obviously from Monroe and Associates, but he was working on the packaging and uh, the design aspects. And he also ran the uh, wall process, which is our new product development system that we use for um, for uh, uh, developing new new vehicles so Dave thanks very much for uh, for agreeing to be on camera uh, let me give you a few basics um, the 4xe um, is, <laughs> it's a lie it says that it's coming in at about 55,000 bucks that's but it starts at that's what it starts at now I guarantee you won't find one like that but the one we're standing underneath is 70 grand. Now, my old J um, is, I guess, worth about what I paid for it. So at 70 grand, that would bring this down to about, what, 30 grand or something. So I may be looking at buying one of these things because the uh, cyber trucks are now being pushed out a long, long ways. <clears throat> and my wife likes, uh, likes the Jeep. So, um, this is, uh, this is the uh, industry's first plug-in plug hybrid electric vehicle with front and rear locking differentials. So that's a big deal if you're an off-roader. Uh, the system is paired with a 2.0 liter inline four engine, which actually we worked on that engine as well. It's a double overhead cam and it's direct inject with a turbocharged uh, engine. Um, it's got a 17 kilowatt our uh, battery pack somehow glued in here and Dave's going to show us all about that. That's going to give you an impressive amount of torque to each wheel. Electrics, uh, as you know, you have instant torque, whereas with uh, a normal engine, you've got to rev it up to a certain amount of RPMs in order to get the, the, the torque that you're looking for. The one thing that I was worried about with this vehicle is um, that I'm going to be going through water. I go through on my existing Jeep. Actually, this Jeep and my existing Jeep will take about the same amount of water. So we're looking at the belt, uh, uh, sorry, not the belt line, but we're looking at just, uh, just below the top of the uh, hood. Uh, this has got a snorkel on it, just like mine. And uh, uh, it's, uh, this one does not. I don't think I have a snorkel. Yeah, it does. It's, it's so got a snorkel internally. Oh, it doesn't yeah, have the on, external. Yeah, on the, engine, the internal, yeah, yeah. internal one. On the engine. So this one here is uh, going to be uh, going to be able to take the water as deep as what I can take in my existing one, and that's about 30 inches. Yep. So um, the uh, the charging system is kind of like what I was initially uh, not so happy about thinking about it because of 110, which is 12 hours of charging to uh, to take that 17 kilowatt hour battery up to up to speed. But apparently there's an adapter well, and I can bring two, it to 240 volts. It'll go to yeah, full charge hours. in two hours. Yeah. Yeah. So we've got the adapters here that we can take and plug into our Tesla charge system outside. So I'm, I'm thinking that that's going to work out well. Um, and in um, range, um, that's, this is getting uh, 49 uh, miles per gallon electric. Equivalent, that's yeah. uh, equivalent. And, um, it's got uh, 370 miles of range. That's with the gas and everything else. And uh, 21 miles on the electric, uh, on the electric uh, battery charge. Now, the, the strange thing here is that, <coughs> or like, let me, not strange, but um, the good news is um, uh, Corey took this thing home and he's absolutely thrilled. It did not kick in once, the electric, uh, uh, sorry, the engine didn't kick in once on the drive from here to his house and then back again. That's amazing. He said the seats are to die for 
and um, and it's not as noisy as what he he doesn't like. Jeep. He hates Jeeps, uh, Wranglers, and uh, he said he really liked this. So this could make my wife happy as well because noise is something you get for free when you buy a, a Jeep Wrangler normally. So I'm looking forward to. Um, to testing this, I'm going to have it the whole weekend, and uh, and I've talked enough. So what I'd like to do is bring um, bring Obi Wan here, and and let's talk a little bit because this is not the suspension that I have. So no, but it is you, a J a, you have the JK, which yeah. is a prior version. Right. This, is, this is a JL suspension, and it's a it is a Rubicon. It's a full. It's a, it's you're looking at the same kind of suspension you would get if you bought a Rubicon with any other Jeep engine, and this has the uh, smart bar which is has an electronic disconnect on the sway bar or the stabilizer bar so you can elect uh, I mean if you've ever seen off-roaders up on rocks with one wheel up in the air kind of spinning uh, what you can do with this one is is disconnect the stabilizer bar so that you have more travel on the suspension on one corner and you can get that other wheel back down where it's making contact uh, with the trail one thing about that <clears throat> is that it also would be handy if you're uh, if you're in a, a creek. In a lot of tight cases, you can't see what you're coming up against uh, in the water. And having some a situation where all of a sudden you've uh, encountered a boulder and you you bring it up, you definitely want to have as many wheels working as possible. So this is a kind of a feature I'd be very interested in um if if i buy one of these yeah and you can get a, a front camera on this as well to see the rocks and things so you, if you don't have them, anybody out there spotting for you yeah. you can actually see those kinds of obstacles and see where you are uh, and, and navigate around them in close well, actually that's one of the reasons that i always get a convertible because if i'm doing that and i've got it in low low and i you know i've got it so i've got the tr the, the the pedals triggered a little bit I can stand up instead of sit down in the seat and I can watch what's coming up in, in front of me. That's the only way to do that without a front camera. Right. So, but uh, my wife doesn't like that either. <laughs> but yeah, this is a, I mean, it's got the, the solid front uh, Dana axles and the solid rear axles. Um, it's a, I mean, it's a fully capable Jeep Wrangler. It's just like any other. They build them on the same line down in Toledo. Um, it's, it's, Fully capable. Right? So I There's just not, squeeze all different. this stuff in. How did you? <laughs> it was, it was you... not easy. The engineers who did this did a great job packaging everything in. It was it was not easy. It's it's a it's a tight fit. You've got uh, uh, the battery heater here, three coolant pumps. You've got all of your electronics back here uh, in a um, what they call the super module. So you you got your uh, DC DC converters, your charging uh, controllers, all that's in here. The battery pack is not down here. It's actually inside underneath the rear seat uh, so we're not gonna be able to see that during the hoist review you'll have to look at that uh, when the when it's down on the ground well actually uh, we had it on the ground and um, and I said why did they bump this up so high and I can't and then later on I figured out oh, oh yeah maybe that's why maybe they've got the uh, the battery um, uh, under there yep now if it would have been up to me I'd have put the electronics under the seat and because it's a smaller package and I would have put the battery probably down here but I don't know what the size of that 17 kilowatt what what is the what how big is the uh, battery pack would it's, it fit in something like this uh I don't know it's a um it's a 17 kilowatt hour battery and I don't know what's what the internals look like in terms of whether it's mm. pouch or prism prismatic or, or what type of uh, okay. uh, cells it's not the same uh, battery pack as they used on the um, uh, Chrysler Pacific hybrid Oh really? No, it's not. And the, and the, but the Chrysler Pacifica. Who, who has else was working on this besides uh, Chrysler? Who like uh, so the Pacifica that was FEV? Who who was working on uh, this one with Chrysler? Do you know? Uh, the battery pack manufacturer, I believe, is Samsung. The one yeah. on the uh, Pacifica, I believe, is LG. Yeah. So and it goes underneath. It 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 takes a place of the stow and go. Uh, tubs on right the, yeah on the I knew that I, I did work on a Pacifica so mm -hmm. but I, I I was just wondering like um, who who helped them with the integration of the the powertrain on this Do you know that I don't know oh, okay well but there are two electric motors in this that's that's yeah, one of the, the yeah. things there's a there's a um, 
there's a motor uh, in the front, which is like a motor generator unit. So uh, it's like an old start inside yeah, the kind of like a the uh, transmission. mild hybrid. Well, there's another one inside the the, the uh, uh, transmission. Uh, so that's the one that that dr that is coupled directly in the drivetrain. There's another one that's on the engine. Oh, uh, okay. So there's two right. there are two uh, separate motors, um, and it's a it's a pretty. I mean, considering the uh, what you're getting, it's a it's sort of complex, but it's a very compact setup. And they and they put all that together. They assemble it and connect all the cables and everything on the same engine line as they do all the other engines down at uh, Toledo. Uh, that's all, all by itself. That's uh, amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah sincerely, yeah. Um, so what, we, what can you tell me about the, uh, the rear end here? This doesn't look much different than what I have currently. It should be the same as any other JL rear end. It's because yeah. you're driving this thing just like any other. You've got the same uh, drive shaft um, um, and you got the front uh, drive as well with the front differential just like uh, any other JL. Um, I don't know the specs on all the mounts because I know that uh, the torque associated with electric drive uh, requires the motor mounts to be beefed up. I'm not sure what they did with the suspension. Mm. Um, mm. Well, the extra weight doesn't seem to have made a big difference to um, to the suspension system itself. Mm -hmm. I don't see anything that's dramatically different here. Um, yeah. uh, some of the uh, <laughs> some of the piping, like for the exhaust, seems to be uh, uh, quite a bit different. The, yeah, the, the port engineers on the exhaust system were they were constantly trying to figure out how to route everything around yeah. all the stuff that was stuffed yeah. in here. So they did they did <laughs> um, they did an amazing job getting it through here, um, considering all of the, the things they had to. I mean, they because Jeep gave priority to the drive system and the, and the electronics and stuff. Uh, so the, they had to protect from the heat of the exhaust system and they had to route, excuse, oh, excuse me, and they had to route uh, around where they could uh, uh, not yeah. impact it. Because, I mean, you've got this, this uh, suspension is going to travel quite a bit, which is why this yeah, exhaust right, pipe goes yeah. up out of there like that. Right. It's, it well, has to be out of the way. You're going to be the other one too is they uh, usually bump. you see that bump there because you know you're going to be going through water and I don't want I, I want to have like a, a reverse. Uh, uh, yeah, you don't want siphon uh, stuff yeah, in there, right? Right. And yeah. the other thing too is I, I was looking at this and it says oh you can go to the deep in the water. That's great as long as I can push the water out of here and uh, and yeah. not choke the engine. Yeah. So. Normally, if, I'm go if I know I'm going into water, I have another piece that'll fit on here and goes up so that I don't have any, any disturbances, if you like. Now, I don't want any more back pressure than uh, what, uh, what the engine will give you right now. Well, on electric drive, you really don't care about that. Yeah, the electric drive is fine, but what happens if I'm now going to kick in? Yeah. If I'm, if I'm going for a ways inside the water, <laughs> I want yeah. to have something so I can exhaust yeah. as well as uh, sucking in the air is a good idea, but exhaust is a big deal as well. Now you got your standard tow package back here uh, with your uh, uh, receiver and your and your uh, trailer connections. You got your four pin here. You got your brake connection over here. So it's all uh, just like your standard towing for any Jeep. You got, you got mm. great capability there. So unlike a lot of electric vehicles, it, this will tow, right? This will haul. Yeah, well, mine, mine uh, I'm very, very happy with my, my Jeep and its towing capabilities. Mm -hmm. And I don't have the fancy schmancy thing here. All I got is a ball and it's all rusted uh, as yeah. well. So, and I took the tow hooks off and, and those ones off and put something bigger. Mm. And if I bought this, I guess the first thing I'd want to do is get rid of the bumper and put on a a winch yeah well you can't well, you, you can you, know you can mount the winch up front i mean there is a mounting we didn't look at that really but there, yeah i think you have you should have uh mounting capability inside this bumper um, yeah that's a, usually you got to take that off and then yeah they they don't do a real clever way of making it happen so i just strip all that off and then mm. i'll give myself although these look pretty these fog lamps look pretty decent Anyways, I've uh, I've just gone with the bigger ones and then uh, and then my put my uh, my winch on, but I'm just starting to think. I wonder if I even need a winch if I've got electric drive. Normally, the reason you've got to have yourself winched out is if you got into too much mud. Yeah. By the way, this 
<laughs> looks a lot more open than, uh, than on my, yeah. uh, my JK, that's for sure. Um, I, uh, well, well you, I'm going to have it this yeah. weekend. Um, uh, you've got a lot of travel there, so it's kind of yeah. tough to put skid plates in. Although I know aftermarket that people sell a lot of stuff for, for them, and there's that debate, do you want to protect it or do you want to have less stuff under there that can get hung up? Well, right? so on mine, I have a skid bar that goes under, or a skid pan that goes underneath here. Mm. And the reason for that is because we don't have very many big rocks around here in Michigan, but what we do have is a lot of mud. Mm -hmm. And mud can get up and it brings in a bunch of little rocks. Now, yep. this is wide open, so the rock would have to be pretty damn big to get caught in here. But the little rocks yeah. can give you some, some real problems. Mm -hmm. So that's why I've got the, uh, the skid pan. Yep, and I mean, if, if you get mud and sand up on top of these skid plates, and, uh, you, can mo you can take most of them off, you can unbolt them. That might be one. No, you don't even have to. You just take it to the, uh, the two-bit car wash, yeah. and, and, um, and you hit it with uh, high pressure, and uh, you get rid of everything. Mm -hmm. it, I've never really had a problem. I just have problems when you get you know, a rock that's about this big, and it fits in your spring, and then that, that's not fun. That's uh, not uh, not good at all, actually. Yeah, but it, you know, I mean, it's it's fully um, skid plated, it meets all the standards that Jeep has. Um, you can if you get yeah. high centered, it's not going to damage anything. It's it's yeah. they're, they're spec to hold the entire weight of the vehicle on top of that. Yeah. That's another reason I don't think they added a huge battery is they wanted to keep the, the weight of this thing um, as well. You know, from within, what Corey uh, Corey told me, he said um, he said uh, going to Oh, uh, yeah, the other thing that I wanted to mention was um, um, our very dear friend, um, Mark Ellis, um, the guy that you saw in the battery, um, battery YouTubes that we've done, um, he wound up uh, succumbing to cancer. So this weekend, I'm driving up to Beloit to, uh, to his memorial. Um, Mark donated his body to science because um, that's kind of the guy he was. He was a very thoughtful, caring kind of person. Um, everybody misses him. I miss him a lot because we were about the same age and uh, had a lot of the same experiences. And uh, so anyway, I'll be driving up to Beloit and I'm going to be taking this vehicle along with me. Um, so. Uh, um, yeah, I'll get a real. <coughs> yeah. Get a good appreciation anyway. for what it does on the road, yeah, anyway. Right. Yeah. Anything yeah. else? <coughs> no, it's a. I mean, uh, it's it's a Wrangler, but it's also got a fully electric mode. Yeah, and you can drive it as a hybrid. There are different modes, uh, kind of like the Chevy Volt. You could do it as a hybrid, or you could do it. Um, it does have a regen capability as well. Mm. So it's a. When you're when you're out driving in hybrid mode you, it, and your battery's low, you can as you slow down, it'll, it'll recharge the battery, or you can run it on the gas engine entirely until you get to your uh, off-roading site. If you're just going to do a short area, and you can just and enjoy the quietness and, and drive through it. And it's got just like every other electric motor, it's got full torque from one RPM. Right? You can be you can crawl yeah, exactly. those rocks and yeah. have a, you don't have to rev the engine. You're you're full. You got full yeah. torque. Yeah. It is an automatic, and you, but you do have the select uh, from you know two uh, high low, four high low. So you've got all yeah, that just like right. a regular Wrangler. Yeah. yeah, I looked inside. I I haven't really driven this yet. Um, um, maybe I'm a purist or a snob or something. So um, uh, JK kind of people are. Mm, I worked on the original redesign of this. And, uh, but I didn't work on the suspension. And, um, and I just decided I was gonna keep my heavy old Jeep rather than the, um, the newer versions. And, uh, uh, and now I can see the, uh, if this is as good as, uh, if this is as good as what, uh, what Corey said, I may be, uh, I may be buying a new, a new Jeep. Um, I can't get a, I can't get a um, cyber truck for years mm -hmm. and I'm, continuously hearing um, noises at our house. So uh, I want to cut the noise down. I, I'm going to probably have to buy a new car. So anyway, um, 
Anything else we need to address under here? Not really. I mean, this is, I mean, consider, I mean, when people talk about Jeeps, they're talking about the Wranglers, right? So it's, I mean, yeah. all the way back to, I'm, because I'm familiar mostly with the M151. <laughs> That's where I spent the most of my time. The military style, yeah. yeah. And then, so that was a direct descendant of the M48s, and you got, yeah. uh, and they, they started selling CJs because everyone was buying the surplus yeah. Jeeps. And so this is, this is where that came from, that, that heritage. Yeah, it's, right. Um, it's a, I mean, it's all, the suspension looks very old school, but it's very robust, very capable. And this, all they did was add the electric drive to it yeah. and, and integrated that into the, the powertrain. So it's much, um, it's much more fuel efficient. And well, the other thing too that they did is they, they went back to the roots, right? Because mm -hmm. the original, the original Jeeps uh, only had a four banger in them. And uh, that, oh. that was, um, yeah. that, that was because of, uh, weight savings, gas savings, yep. every other kind yep. of savings. Uh, so going back to a four banger is, um, you know, to me, mm, maybe a good thing, yeah, especially kept, when you're looking at the price of gas right now. Well, and they kept all the exterior the same. There's some modification they had to do for the battery pack and the rear seat, uh, yeah. but the, the interior is the same, all of the uh, oh no, it's not. What? I found out we can take out the rear windows. Oh, oh, oh my God! I couldn't believe my eyes. I mean, when we had well, the uh, when we had that initial chat about this this vehicle here, yeah. when we were talking to the uh, the directors and the VP and all that other stuff, and they said, "Well, Sandy, you've been driving these things forever. What what's your recommendation?" I said, "Make the top out of um, out of carbon fiber. And if you can't do that for me, then." Give me, uh, give me something where I can, uh, I can have a soft top that'll open up even into the back seat. And then I said, get rid of the T-top because I, I mm. dislike my, yeah. it's too much effort. And then I said, and if it's possible, I mean, I'll flip the, uh, I'll flip the, the back end up and then it'd be great if you could get rid of the, the rear windows. And they did. And the rear window is gone. That is a game changer. That's brilliant. Well, the thing about this, I mean, the 4XE is it all those mods that, I mean, the Wrangler is one of the most modded vehicle in the world, right? Yeah. I mean, everybody buys yeah. different things and customizes it. Uh, but your parts, all of those kits, all those external things that you want to add or, to, to, or change on, this, on the suspension and whatnot, should fit this vehicle. It's a, it is a Jeep, it's a Jeep Wrangler. And so all those people out there, all those enthusiasts who want to change the, this, you know, raise it, put different wheels on it, the tires. Uh, well, this has already got lifts. This is about, yeah. this is, uh, like I said, the only thing I'm probably going to do is I'm going to put a, a winch on because I don't trust myself. I'm going to put a winch on for sure, but yeah. everything else I'd want is already here. Yeah, I mean, all the, I mean, the roof, the doors, all that kind of stuff, yeah. it all, it's all Jeep. Yeah. Well, I, I noticed, too, that we can take the doors off still, mm -hmm. which, um, again, my wife doesn't like that a whole lot, but, uh, can, but I can take the doors off. And the JL, I think the, the windshield folds down a lot easier than it does on the yeah. JK. When the JK is, you got some... The JK is impossible. I've right. never done it. Do it it's, on the, try it on the J, on this one. It's a really? lot easier, yeah. Well, I will. I'll try that out. <laughs> okay, so there you have it. <laughs> So uh, uh, Overholster knows what he's talking about. That's, a, uh, that's what we say around here anyway. There's a couple of people you don't argue with, and he's one of them. So no Obi-Wan, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you for the, uh, for the insight here. And uh, if you can, uh, keep, uh, keep talking, or sorry, keep talking. Keep subscribing, and uh, we'll be talking to you again soon. Thank you so much for watching uh, Monroe Live, and, um, and thank you. Thank you.